Good night, huh, fella? Hey, sweetheart. Oh, hi. I'm Jesse. And I'm Steven. And you're watching In Depth. On oh, Nido. All right, so you may be wondering why I'm uh, dead asleep, and it's because uh, we went to the Rivian pre auto show. Yes. Um, and we got back at four o'clock in the morning. So, you, woo! Four o'clock, 4.15. Sure. But I'm brought out in Bushy Pill. Yeah, I'm you, ready to go. You, sl you slept the whole ride home. That was nice. Two hours of the ride home. Anyway, hey. um, <laughs> this episode was brought to you by a betterrouteplanner.com. Uh, Zach, apparently, I just got word that he made it to England. So he went, from, he went from Sweden down to Italy all the way to England using a better route planner. So I guess it works. Yeah, I know it works. And they also help support the show. All right, so let's let's get into this. Let's talk about Rivian a little bit here. For those of you who don't know, who might be like, I need to learn about Rivian. Everyone's talking about it today. I don't know why everyone's talking about it. Everybody thinks they've only been around for the past three years, but they've been actually around since 2009. Right. So they make the RT1 and the RS1. RS1. So the RT1 is their truck. This is the first one we ever saw. Like, it was the first thing they ever actually showed the public. Um, and they just sort of exploded on the scene about three years ago. Yeah. They had been in stealth mode, yeah, as you were saying, since 2009. And no one had any idea. Fully electric trucks. These aren't your typical pickup trucks. You may notice this, this pickup truck has a very short bed. These are not your typical pickup trucks. These are adventure vehicles, yeah. um, which might make a little more sense when you see the RS1, which looks like a Land Rover. A little bit. A little bit, right? It's got some inspiration. Pretty much almost exactly. Um, the biggest difference between this and a Land Rover, obviously, is that the Land Rover is one of the most polluting vehicles on the road. Yeah. And the Rivian RS1 is going to be basically one of the least polluting vehicles the on the road. They haven't gone into production yet, but let's talk a little bit about what is promised with these vehicles. Yeah. So let's get into the stats of what we have mm -hmm. for these. Unusual and new to the electric automotive configuration, these actually have four independent electric motors. There's 147 kilowatt power capacity at each wheel, and the total power output can be configured to different levels from 300 kilowatts to 562 kilowatts input to the gearbox. That is a motor on each wheel. Yeah. So you can independently turn, and you can't do this on a Tesla, nope. right? A Tesla has one motor for each axle. Yes. So you you know, you can make the front wheels go forward and you can make the rear wheels go backward maybe. Doesn't <laughs> doesn't accomplish much. No no matter how you try Traction and spin it. Traction control is that much better right. now. <laughs> but, but with the Rivian, you could potentially make the car just go, Right, uh, by you know, spinning the right tires yeah. one way and spinning the, the left tires the other way. Um, in theory. <laughs> in theory. But in, in practice, you can actually uh, do some pretty astounding torque vectoring, which is essentially the same thing, yeah. except when you're off-roading and you don't have the best traction, you can, you can vector the torque. And it's all digital, of course, so you can Right. As we've already experienced from driving an electric vehicle so much, this is going to take that to another level that mm. we have yet to see. Right. So not only do we have four motors, we also have a 180 kilowatt hour battery. Yeah. That's... That's the top level. Going to get over 400 miles of range. Yep. Which is pretty much the biggest range we've heard about in a Soon-to-be production vehicle. So, I mean, you know, the Roadster, the Roadster's 620. Got 600, yeah, but I mean, semi. for, a, for a, a car that you could drive with your family, yeah, a good commuter, maybe. It's maybe. it's taking the bar to another level in battery pack size. Right. It's definitely it's definitely big enough for the purpose of the vehicle, and I, and I want to get into sort of the segment that they are going after. Rivian is almost exclusively going after this um, adventure vehicle market. Is there is there an existing market for adventure vehicles? Uh, I've taken the Model S to some very precarious places. Okay, but it's not really sold. It's sold as a road car. Yeah, it's sold it's as maybe not, a commuter. It's not intended. Even the X isn't intended for such and I've taken, aggressive... I, I've taken the three on some pretty questionable right. uh, off-roading scenarios. It, it was on a road. I'm thrilled. It was on a road, <laughs> but it wasn't necessarily, it was not a paved road. No. And it was not necessarily a well-maintained road. Uh, it was on the Cape, actually. It was, a, it was this, uh, there's this road, 
and it shows it on the map. On the so it's on the map. Okay. It's not on the dunes. <laughs> but yeah, it was just like rocky, and it was like, oh, half the road goes away. And you're like, hmm, okay. Right. It handled it, right? It worked fine. The point being, this is the first vehicle that is intended to go places that no man has gone before or no electric vehicle has essentially gone right. before. Right. Now, but are there gas versions of this? So, I mean, there's you the... You mean like a Hummer? Does, can you drive that? On... Hummer, have you seen what Hummers no, can do? I haven't. No, I haven't. So, okay. So H1, it, not the H2. That thing's... That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, I mean, this is this is sort of like a... For the more off-roady type of, of people. Yeah. The, uh, the odd part is it's not the Jeep kind of off-roady, get your car all muddy kind of thing. Well, it can they, be. It could. It could. But it doesn't have the not same... Not the SUV. It doesn't have that same appeal. The truck has the capability, the durability, mm -hmm. so it seems... Uh, it's rugged. Yeah. So it's got I, a stance. So I mean, that's the that's the the overall of Rivian, right? Those are the two things we we know so far. Uh, the company's been in stealth mode, and basically everything else is unknown in terms of what their fu future vehicles are three, going to be. Three versions of the battery pack have been actually concluded. So we have a 105 kilowatt hour, 135 kilowatt hour, and then the 180 for right. the big one. So we're looking at probably over 200 miles for the base range right which to, is excellent i it, mean and more importantly for those that are real enthusiasts of that i mean they harp on the fact that they can do a zero to 60 three seconds with their mid-range model the high is, one even doing 3.2 right with a 180 kilowatt, kilowatt battery. battery pack yeah so i mean yeah. that's that's pretty intense yes. um so let's talk a little bit about the event it was in new york it was on a pier it was at the classic car club pier we were really rubbing <laughs> elbows with the high society there. I've, I've never been to New York. Well, I mean, I have been to New York, but not, not in such a hoitsy-toitsy kind of way. This was a very high-class function. What Jesse's referring to is he's never seen so many neat, exotic cars just hanging out next to you as you have a cocktail. Yeah, fair enough, right. And There's there... a Ferrari F50 yes. in the garage next to us. It's not your everyday sight. Right. So... Uh, yeah, it was a very highfalutin sort oh, of event. Oh, it was gorgeous. The, the event was stunning in the visual appeal. They really went all the stops. I mean, you had these little cookies. You had the... Well, no, no. First off, let's talk about... You had the delicious little hamburgers that are mm -hmm. like this, the sliders. We had the panko breaded cauliflower. Then they brought up the desserts, and you had the little brownies right. with the sugar and the cookies. Right, hors d'oeuvres. There were, there were, it was an open bar. It's fun. Free open bar. It's you get fun. everyone's drinking their cocktails yeah. and they're look, walking around the cars. Now, you couldn't go in the cars. Not everybody could go in the cars. <laughs> but Steven could get in the cars. I like cars. Um, because, well, we're a YouTube channel. We have 100,000 subscribers, <laughs> and we can do what we want, basically. Um, so <laughs> we were actually able to get some shots of the interiors of the cars, which we'll show you that here yes. now. And they were very impressive. The interiors of the, these cars, um, or these trucks, I guess I, I keep saying cars. Yeah, Can I say cars? you keep saying cars. The, so in the, interiors, the interiors of these, of these trucks, trucks have textures. They they have so many elements of them that have the attention to detail. When you open up the driver's side door, there's a flashlight, not an mm. umbrella, a flashlight. The thought process that went into having the creative elements for the truck. Right. I I mean, these are things that I find mindfulness is so important. When you have all your grocery hooks in your frunk, or not even for gro just groceries, for your adventure bags, your rock climbing gear, your camping gear, anything that you need, things aren't going to jostle around. Right. The bed of the truck was impressive in the light that it offered. You Normally, you have a little doot LED. This thing has like this giant LED strip that's going across, and it illuminates the entire bed. Right. You have the bay that you can open up and throw your snowboards or your surfboards or your dog or your So you're cat. talking about the gear tunnel, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was, that's impressive to me. That shows someone with some uh, thinking skills was involved in the designing <laughs> of the truck. No, but I'm serious. Like, yeah. with so many other automobiles, it's just like, well, we have cup holders. So there were three... 110 outlets in the truck yeah so in the in the bed there were three 110 outlets so you could pres presumably power a campsite a work site uh yeah work site air compressor so uh, that's where i get a little confused because the, the the truck does have some things that really say to me like oh contractor like having an air compressor in the truck boom nail gun 
inflatable tube to float on the Pemajawasset River. Okay. All right. Okay. So inflatable air mattress in your tent. All right. Mountain so, bike tires. But that's unicycle not, tire. Okay, but I guess okay. So you're saying that this is going to be a smaller air it, compressor. It's uh, not like a. You're not going to be running. I don't know if you're going to frame a house with it, but okay. It's got the air rides. It's double for the air ride suspension and for okay whatever else you might be using it. Fair enough. Okay, <laughs> and then it also has towing capacity as well. Yeah. So let's talk about the towing capacity. How much can you tow? So I what, upwards of eight thousand pounds. Yeah, looks like it. So, 8,000 pound towing capacity. I am not, I don't tow a lot of things. How, what, what is that in terms of? Mind you, this is not a full size, this is a f- truck that has full size pickup capability, like a 1500 size truck in what would be considered your Toyota Tacoma, your Chevy Colorado, your Ford Range. Not, well, it's a little, I guess a little bit above the Ford Range. So, this is sort of, I'm not it's a like pickup a truck. It's like a mid range pickup. Okay. It's in size. Mm-hmm. When we were there, I wasn't certain if we were going to be looking at a full-size pickup. I was very infinitely curious of how big the truck would be. Right, because, I mean, you can't really get a sense of scale when it's just a picture. Um, but when we're standing next to it, yeah, it wasn't massive. It's not your tiny little S10. It's not, yeah, it's not your tiny little S10 or small pickup truck. It's not your full half ton. It's, it's, it's somewhere right in, in between. the middle. Right, okay. But it has the capabilities to pull and perform like a full-size pickup truck. Because it has an electric powertrain. Of course. Okay, so... Let's be real. So that... So it's an impressive towing capacity. Yeah, impressive all, all around. Yeah. Excellent. So uh, another thing, too, was um, their rack system that they had. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about this. So the rack system was extremely versatile in both going on top of the bed, but also on top of the truck itself. So if you wanted to switch from doing your mountain bikes to your kayaks... It didn't matter. You could have so many different configurations, which was intelligent and something that isn't so readily available except in aftermarket parks. No OEM truck specification is having these types of rack systems. I see. And so this is going to help in your mountain bikes or your kayaks or like, oh, gee, I want to bring a full size canoe. How do I do that? Am I going to sit it right on top of the, the, you know, stick one end in the in the bed of the truck and just stick the other end over the cab. <laughs> right. Now you can actually just use racks, be able to bungee cord using that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's impressive. A lot of the design was impressive. I mean, let's talk, I, I have to keep talking about this gear tunnel and I want to talk about the frunk. I mean, you mentioned the, the hooks for the frunk. Yep. All around the outside of the frunk. Genius design. And the frunk itself. 330 liters enormous okay you i looked at it and i was like i want to take a bath in the frunk <laughs> i really did like yeah looking at it i just was like i want to sit in it could, so badly could be used for a hot tub if you wanted to yeah I, with a tarp and some ingenuity i'm not above that and i did hose. that as a kid in the bed of my dad's I, <laughs> but i'm saying you could do it in yeah, the frunk um yeah it it really was impressive to see this much space space yeah in that truck i was like wow because i mean with the gear tunnel i also wanted to climb into the gear tunnel it looked inviting like it you know it's not just like this metal tube it's you know it's kind of carpeted on the bottom it, with for, their with their yeah. interesting carpeting yeah it looks like you could just kind of throw anything in there and it would be all right but that's what's nice about it for anybody that does have experience with a pickup truck if you're picking up something heavy or bulky or clunky and you're throwing it over the bed or you're not you're too lazy to go around and open your tailgate or you can't because your hands are full mm-hmm. I mean, this is a much more accessible box and spot to put things in. And it's so much better than putting them on the seats in your truck. Because, I mean, yeah. th- this is, you know, a, what, a five-seater mm-hmm. pickup truck. Yep. Um, and normally, I would imagine some of the stuff that you'd be putting in this gear tunnel would have normally gone on the seats. But instead, you get to put it in this cool gear tunnel out of the way, out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. Um, also, it's a step. So you can also fold it down and then step on it to, to put your bike up on the yeah. roof and stuff like that. So, I mean, there's a lot of really, really good design mm-hmm. in this truck. And seeing it in person, you're just like, yes, absolutely. Yeah, it really, uh, I it won me over in the truck category for sure. Mm-hmm. So the other thing that was interesting is that this is a sort of a solid body um, design. So mm-hmm. normally with a truck, and I don't entirely know all the ins and outs of this. But normally with a truck, you have a soft body, um, which connects the bed and the cab. Um, And 
with this, everything is rigidly mounted to the skateboard. And the skateboard is kind of like, well, it's a lot like a Tesla right. uh, Model S, Model X, or Model 3. You just have all the batteries in the bottom. You get all the benefits of it. I mean, it's essentially, it's the only way really to build a battery like, electric yeah, vehicle at the moment. I mean, once batteries become, you know, the size of a thimble and you get to just, you know, just store the batteries somewhere else, you know, I'm I'm sure we're going to have we're going to have we're going to have different designs for cars, but at the moment with the lithium ion pack where it's nice big and heavy, yeah. um you put it all on the floor, helps low with, center of gravity. Low center of gravity helps with side impacts, um and and a balanced center of gravity as well. Yeah. So everything is like exactly it's a car designer's dream. And you can design whatever kind of car you want around it. There's no exhaust system you have to worry about. There's no transmission tunnel. Yeah. Um, nothing about this. Let's talk a little bit more about the bed. There's a spare tire in yes. the bed. Mm -hmm. Do most That's pickup trucks have... the course. They, yeah. Okay, all right. I mean, not always are they integrated into inside the bed. Uh -huh. Mine goes under the vehicle. I see. Kind of nice. Right. And... I mean, I'm assuming you could take that out and just fill that with more gear if you were really going on some kind of expedition. Wouldn't you want the you would spare probably you probably want the, the spare tire. You'd want the spare tire, I suppose. But yeah. um, then the then the the folding the tailgate yep. can fold in half, mm -hmm. so that way you can get even closer into the bed. Right. So I mean, yeah, just a ton of really smart design choices there. Yeah. Um, now let's talk about the RS1, mm -hmm. which is their. SUV. Yep. The interior was really striking to me. Yeah, that was probably the showstopper because it was everything that you would expect from a very luxury interior mm -hmm. of, well, this, these days SUVs are, that's, uh, yeah, you mm -hmm. hit the nail on the head with Range Rover. I mean, they run the flagship beautiful design of an interior, but mm, it's dirty fossil fuels. Right. So, I mean, I yeah. think that, <laughs> so anyone who is thinking of buying a Land Rover is now hopefully going to have their head turned to Oh, it behooves Rivian. you to buy... No, 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 you're coming over. That's yeah, yeah. Clearly. Oh, of course, yes. So, I mean, so they have kind of both aspects of, like, person who wants a Land Rover yep. for... Whatever reasons Whatever that you may reasons. Have. It can certainly perform because it's built on the exact same platform as the truck. No Land Rover which, is going to do what this vehicle can do. Absolutely. Yeah. So you have all the benefits of that. Then you are able to sit what look like seven people... Yep. In in the truck. So, I mean, good for a family, potentially. The same rack system goes on that as well. Mm -hmm. So, you can remove the racks. You can put them on. Um, they seemed fairly lightweight. Yes. Um, I played with them. They, yeah. They were. So, nice and lightweight. And they <laughs> and they kind of, they, they telescope in a little yes. bit. Yes. And that lets you put it into the bed mm -hmm. of the truck or into the back of the car. A lot of really good design. Um, so, then we were at the event for a very long time. Because we were waiting for an interview with RJ Scaringe, the CEO. The um, man behind the Rivian. Yeah. And so we had a lot of time to uh, to look around, a lot of time to uh, chat with people who worked for Rivian. Um, they had flown a lot of people from Rivian to this event. I appreciated that everybody that I had spoken to there that night, where everyone was on the same wavelength. Mm -hmm. The company mission is so strong and it's so straightforward that everyone that's there participates because they have that common belief and enjoyment in the outdoors and sustainability. So it's a very um, outdoorsy kind of crowd. It's, it's a very it's like awesome. It's like where where have you kayaked? It, what kind of trails do you it's like? True, yeah. It's true. It's true. You like the Sierra Nevadas? You like the Rockies? It, it was really cool to mm -hmm. be able to interact with so many different people that are like. I love this company, I love its branding, I love its mission, and I love what we're able to do, and this is focused on my lifestyle. Yeah. And that's an important thing, I believe, in seeing that you can take a certain niche aspect of somebody's type of lifestyle and accommodate it. So then I, I, we've, we waited until the end of the event, yep. um, and I got to interview RJ, which is awesome. Um, hard man to get a hold of, because he is really nice, he's really respectful to people, he like We'll talk to them and talk to them and talk to them, um, which is totally fine. And I'm the same way, so I can relate to that. Are you? Um, yeah. I yeah. at events, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You. So are. If someone keeps talking to me, I keep talking to them. Um, and so we finally got the interview. Yeah. Unfortunately, it was right when everyone, like, people came out of the woodwork to break down the entire event and move it somewhere else. Vehicles um, are moving out so of the, the background. <laughs> right. The audio is a little. Um, 
Yeah, we did a pretty good job with the audio. We Luckily, we had some laugh best. mics, but uh, it was a little chaotic. Um, we're going to put the whole uh, interview as a separate video. It's going to come out a little bit later, but we're just going to talk about some of the points yeah. uh, first. So my first question to RJ was, you know, you have to be an idiot to start um, a car company yeah. um, now, these days, and to start an electric car company, as Elon Musk said. Um, is idiocy squared. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to gauge his reaction as, as to why he wanted to start this company. And we'll, let's just play the clip. All right, so I am here with RJ Scringe, the CEO of Rivian. Um, we just had a fantastic night um, learning all about your cars uh, and, well, trucks, really. Yeah. Um, these are some really amazing vehicles, and I just want to first of all say thank you for this interview, oh, and thank, thank you, you for thank you. you know doing all of this, and you know speaking of doing all of this. So um, Elon Musk has said before, right, that um, starting a car company these days is idiocy, and starting an electric car company is idiocy squared. So. If you're going to start an electric car company, you have to have something driving you. What is driving you? Yeah, it's, it's a, starting a business like this, it's so complex. There's so many different elements, the financing, the supply chain, the mm -hmm. technology, the product itself. So for me, since I, was, since I was really young, I've always wanted to do something that was going to have a lot of impact and do something within automotive. I'm a, I'm a lifelong car enthusiast. Mm -hmm. And the opportunity to do something that was influencing the future of transportation really was core to me. And, mm -hmm. it, and it drove the decisions to start the business and, and kept me so focused on building the company. So I, I was really expecting him to talk about sustainability, about the planet, to talk about climate change, to talk about how we need to change transportation over to something more sustainable. And he didn't say that. And I was a little surprised. I... I was a little surprised. I realized that he had gone through an entire, like, full day of this, right? Of people talking to him, asking him questions. So I, I can completely understand that he was beat. I was beat. We were both exhausted. But yeah, I was hoping that his drive was coming from a more, a bigger place than just necessarily, like, I want to have an impact. Well, it just says, I mean, the, the tenacity that he has to create what he has. I mean, the way that he went about doing it. Mm. This was in hiding for nearly a decade. Right. And it, the point being, it, he's so focused right. as an individual. So then I pushed him on it and I asked him a little bit more about sustainability. And we talked a little bit about that. So then I wanted to kind of gauge where he was in terms of charging infrastructure, whether they were going to build a charging infrastructure or whether they were going to rely on other charging infrastructures. Of course, um, this has a CCS plug, yes. which I'm sure is going to have a very high charge rate, which means that it, it should be able to take advantage of the Electrify America chargers when those finally come into play, which is probably when the truck is gonna come out. Right. So that's fine. Well, interestingly but, enough, by the time that the truck does come out, I mean, he admitted we're getting the acceleration of charging infrastructure, but if there are places that doesn't have it, it right. was nice to hear Rivian's going to step in and do their own charging. And I think that that's really smart. I think that having, you know, putting in charging infrastructure in places like the Sierra Nevadas, where there might not be any, absolutely, is going to be really smart. Or the White Mountains or any, you know, every place that's like off the grid, very hard since you need a grid to charge the cars. <laughs> if it's off grid, you know, it's... Catch-22. Right. It's, well, where so, are we going to go once the battery runs? Right. <laughs> so I'm glad that he, you know, mentioned that, yeah. talked about it, and said that they're actually going to put in their own infrastructure. Yeah, that's huge. Really, really appreciated that point. Then I asked him, I said, you know, you have a truck. You don't have a... And a SUV, an SUV. Yeah, and an SUV, but you don't have a contractor's SUV, right? It's not... It doesn't have a long bed. You can't put a sheet of plywood in it. It's very fancy for that. It's, yeah. And it's very fancy. Exactly. <laughs> it's not this sort of rugged thing. And I asked him, are you going to have a utility truck? And his answer was essentially no. So there's going to be a, a lineup of six vehicles built on this platform. Mm. And I'm just a little surprised that none of them are going to be marketed towards a contractor or any kind of utility work. It's just a, an adventure vehicle. I don't know. To me, that was strange. It was a little odd. I asked if they were going to go for a little smaller, you know, like... Right. Because, um, you know, if you think about an adventure vehicle, sure, you could think about a Land Rover if you're trekking across Africa or something like that. That's I That was the... 
Indians? <laughs> that that was the idea behind Land Rover, right? Yeah. It was for that. They don't. Most people don't need 14 inches of ground clearance. So De- depends on where you're going. It depends, but most people can get around with a Subaru. Subaru right. is like when you're thinking about adventurous people. A lot of people drive them. They're efficient. They're you know for the most part Man, reliable. When you leave America, you don't see many pickup trucks anyway. It's true. It's really us. And it's a good size, you know, with the sort of station wagony sort yeah. of approach. Where are they going to make a Subaru? I did not get a, a straight answer out of him about that. I think it's in, in a very intrinsic market of car, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, ultimately. I mean, when you look at a global perspective, it, it really is unnecessary. Yeah. What do you actually need? Right. Just came back from running around the planet. Right. And like I said, I really didn't see that many pickup trucks. Absolutely. That blew my mind being living where I do and always having trucks growing up and right. realizing, yeah, did I really use the bed that much? No, it's I true. can do without. And, and his point to not having a longer bed pickup truck was that 90% of the time you're not using that space anyway. Right. The counter argument to that, I would say, would be for people who are going to use the back of that truck a lot or right. need that space that 10% of the time. I'm certain somebody will have when the tailgate's down, a lot of trucks have this extra rack that comes out to the back that can essentially extend your bed. That's true. So yeah. that... If they don't make the, their own part for that, I'm sure someone will, but right. they seem like they'd be on top of that. If and, I mean, they supposedly they they have the patent to remove the bed and replace it with something else. Right, which so is there, really interesting to see. So there could be a longer bed variant where the, the wheels stay in the same place, but the bed just extends out a little farther. <laughs> it's an idea. Transformers? Um, <laughs> yeah. And then to, 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 you know, finally leave it off, we talked a little bit about stealth mode. He really wanted his company to get a, a, a strong footing before he announced it to the world. And there are a lot of other electric truck startups right out of the gate were public and saying, we're going to make an electric truck. We don't have anyone working at the company, but we're going to make an electric truck. Which And so he's taken a completely different approach. Now, they didn't always, they didn't go into this thinking they were going to make an electric truck. They originally wanted to make a coupe. They right. originally wanted yeah. to make a small, you know, sports car. I think they probably were like... That's a pretty contentious area in terms of electric sports cars. They said, okay, Tesla really has the market, market cornered on that. And there's plenty of other competition coming in eventually, maybe, presumably, someday. They're saying. Allegedly. They're saying. They, they keep telling me. Still, still waiting. But <laughs> I so I, I think... I think that jumping to trucks was a smart choice, and being in stealth mode for so long was a smart choice. He didn't run into any of the problems that Elon runs into. Because you eliminated distractions when you didn't make everything public. Exactly. That part of the person that he is, and having that focus, Mm -hmm. you can maintain more focus when you don't have anything around you. And it was impressive to me. I think that he put together a really awesome team, a really strong team. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, you have to keep in mind that they're still a startup. You know, they haven't made a product that people have bought yet. There are pre-orders. Yes. But no one has, they haven't shipped any products right. yet. Right, we're not in production mode right. quite yet. So, you know, there's still a lot riding. They're not done yet, right? Like, this is not... This war isn't won this, until the tipping point of electric vehicles is right. superior to it's true. internal combustion. And they're not over the hump in terms of, you know, Rivian is not over the hump in terms of production because they do have a factory Mm-hmm. but they haven't produced any vehicles from it. So we need, you know, that is what we need to be looking at in the future. Sure. And that's the kind of thing you can't do in stealth mode, right? And you can't get $7 million from Amazon but <laughs> in stealth mode. Wait, wait, but in stealth mode, they are rolling around in Ford F-150s. It's true. That are disguised would be having that skateboard platform. It's true, so right. that's pretty cool for stealth until you realize there's no exhaust you're like, what's this Ford right. doing with that? So, I mean, I think that the, you know, being in stealth mode was very smart. Yeah. And, and I'm just, I'm curious, you know, it's been three years already. They seem to be doing just fine. Um, but once production starts to kick in, once things start to get a little rocky, I want to see what happens with his team. I want to see if people are going to jump ship, if they're going to go like, oh my gosh, pr- producing electric vehicles is harder than we thought. It's something that we see with every manufacturer, whether including Tesla. Of course. Right? You know, Tesla has production woes. So does uh, BMW. So does Jaguar. So does Nissan. They all have like, oh, where do we get our batteries kind it's of problems. It's not the same thing that people have been doing. Right. 
and Rivian is a brand new company, so they're going to have growing pains. You know, the, these things are all going to be coming. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to be expecting them, so that way we're not all surprised when they're like, "Making electric vehicles is hard." Oh my gosh, you know, like it's didn't, it's didn't going know. to be difficult. And so, yeah. Anyway, that that was my take of Rivian. I was very impressed. I thought, hundred percent. I mean, if you're in the market for this kind of thing, it's really exciting. Yeah. If you're not in the market for this kind of thing. It's still exciting. It's exciting. It's cool to see. But you're probably not going to be able to participate. All right. Thank you so much for watching this episode of In-Depth. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button um, and also hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And we will see you next week. Or actually, well, Steven, you'll probably be on the other side of the world. But uh, I will I'll see you next week. And eventually, uh, eventually right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, thanks so much for watching. Now, now you know. know.